But I wanted to introduce two people who are here to talk about um, Citizens for Maryland Libraries and the upcoming annual conference that will be in this larger meeting room. So Jim DeArmey is the acting director of uh, CML. Kristen Burns was the president of CML. And they want to talk a little bit about the annual meeting coming up and then um, we'll go from there. Yes, very briefly. I know how board meetings go, and very briefly, it's always a welcome term. <laughs> but very briefly, uh, we do have the annual meeting in your beautiful new life, which we finally get to come to now that, that, that COVID has left us a little bit alone. And, um, and we'll be here on October 15th for that. And, and I expect to see you all there just because we live right here. So there. <laughs> But um, that's not actually why we're here today. Um, Citizens for Maryland Libraries is an organization that works with the Maryland State Library, and we're a nonprofit citizens group that works with the Maryland State Library and the Maryland Library Association to promote library funding and legislative support for, for Maryland libraries. But Maryland libraries really do provide some of the best service in the country and because of that in the world and and we give awards occasionally well every annually not occasionally we just have to come up with them um, we give awards and and we have one to present tonight so um we have some people coming in in they come um, there is an award for the outstanding employee <laughs> and it goes to surprising no one. Some wonderful things. I don't want. I'll, I will. I have. I tried to hide my oh. my presentation <laughs> thing and acknowledge me. <laughs> but there. Now it looks more official. supported service in the past and highlighted the dedication to continuing to provide service during the pandemic. That struck everyone. She wrote, no idea was too challenging or complicated for Kathy and her team to handle. Kathy and its residents are better for her leadership. Pardon me, I'm a crier, I can't help you. <laughs> she also quoted, um, Skip Falls when he said, Kathy is deeply caring about our staff and community members and starting March 13th, 2020, focused her team 100% on how to reinvent the library and reopen as soon as possible. And there are many more words that I can say, but, um, <laughs> but um, I have here for you the, um, the nominate the, the congratulations letter, the actual text of the nomination. I checked for hundred photos. Can I keep this coming? <laughs> it's written out to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this lovely map. <laughs> for this, Skip doesn't know anything more than how to do a good presentation. <laughs> so, he worked this out. So. I love my job. You all know that. 
So thank you. And uh, yeah, some of it is <laughs> All right, now we have to I have to eat up some of your time to take some dramatic. <laughs> uh, and then, oh, and then, I'll do that quickly. My name is Kristen Peronis, and I'm representing the Maryland State Library Board. And this library branch and this library system is top notch. You are all doing really great work, and I think that we just exemplify that. So thank the board for your service, and thanks to the staff for everything you do in operations. Thank you all. Kathy Way, you should all be proud to be on the board of an organization that provides the service that this library is. Don't cut off your can anyone hear me yet i don't think they can hear me at the in the room joey's been trying to get it working can, can we can we be heard now Alex and Christine uh, haven't been able to connect us by sound to the room. So Joey is working on that. Uh, in the meantime, Ms. Simona is chairing the meeting after we've just given a presentation to Kathy Hollerbach from the Citizens of Maryland Libraries. is going to go ahead and run the meeting because we, we just have a, a, uh, a failed system. It's not going to be, we're not going to be able to hear you. So I'll have her run the meeting the way you and I discussed with Jay taking what he did about this. So we're adopting the minutes now. Very good. Okay. okay. So I'll be voting for it. Okay. And you, can you hear us? Uh, more or less. It's a little hard. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. 
Hearing no comment, we will is there a motion to accept the minutes? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Ayes have it. All right. Next. Okay, would you like to make the chair's report? <laughs> okay. So um, I'm sorry. So I'm so sorry for the glitch here, and I know we wanted to hear from Christine talking about Kathy also, but but we just have a technical difficulty. But um, the main the main uh, meat of the meeting is the three policies, and what uh, Chris and Jay and I talked earlier today. Jay is going to go ahead and um, talk a little bit about what went out by email, which was to clarify what the executive committee um, talked about the main main changes that they made <clears throat> and um, that they voted unanimously to, to bring this forward. So there is an opportunity for everyone to talk through each of the policies. You can make motions to amend if you if you feel that, that there's some reason to see. I think the idea would be to vote on each policy one by one. Um, so any questions about the process here? <clears throat> Take it away. Okay. Um, on September 1st, the executive committee met and wanted for the sole purpose to discuss these uh, three uh, proposed changes to policies. Uh, we considered, or the comments were considered by the executive committee uh, one by one, uh, and th there was discussion on the overview. So the overview of these policies were to first create an, a, a way to appeal that would be more, uh, that we could get these resolved in a quicker fashion. It'll be easier for both the uh, administration and the uh, employees. And these matters wouldn't have to sit for a month or two until a uh, new executive committee meeting, I'm sorry, until new bulk committee meeting. So um, we had the discussions on each of them and considered the uh, changes that were proposed. Uh, initially, I wanted to express to the executive committee, as I would express to you, that these, these uh, policies are not locked in stone uh, they are guidelines. We don't want to create a uh, uh, bend chart where it goes. If you have this, you automatically go to that because you have to build into these policies a little bit of flexibility to deliver justice, uh, just as the court rules uh, are created and the court they don't tell the court what to do, but each time as the court addresses issues, they have to consider the court rules in the overall scheme of things. Um, also, I reminded the executive committee that these are appeals. They are not uh, the uh, vote committee uh, ruling or, or considering each of these grievances or disciplinary matters on their own because you have an administration that's supposed to handle that. You aren't supposed to be second guessing them. Uh, you address issues where the administration uh, made an egregious mistake and not just you disagreed with it. Uh, as I said, the executive committee went through these bit by bit along with the comments <laughs> and then made a unanimous uh, recommendation to uh, decision to recommend these policies. Policies were sent out to you. Um, the biggest change in the overall um, evidentiary appeals was a great uh, three member board where the chair of the board would be appointed by the chairman of Holt uh, and that there would be a list of uh, committee members that would be uh, taken and they would be randomized. Yeah. And so that the top two on that list would be the members of the committee. So there'd be a chairman designated 
uh, chairman of the uh, panel designated by the uh, chairman of the Voltran trustees, and then two more randomized individuals on that uh, panel. They would consider uh, whatever situation was under there, whether it was a disciplinary, a grievance, or something else, and they would render a written report to the full uh, vault. And all of the trustees would then have an opportunity to vote on that. Uh, if, there's a, if there's a need to take additional information, that could be done. And if the full committee decided that they wanted to have the employee address them and explain their position further, you could do that. Uh, ultimately, it is the uh, trustee's decision. However, the panel would be gathering information and passing it along to the trustees. So you do not have a long multi-day evidentiary hearing. It's to make it go quicker and not be like a, a star chamber experience for the employee. Um, so the three member board would uh, hear those uh, appeals or grievances or for discipline as quickly as possible. Uh, they would render a decision at the next regularly scheduled uh, meeting along with a report. And we have in there a situation where they would present a um, uh, report to the board. And I believe that we set a time requirement. I don't remember. Um, in, any, in any case, uh, if would there be, does anybody have any questions on what was considered on the panel or uh, the evidentiary appeals? Or now would be probably the best time to address that one separate from the other two, because basically the evidentiary appeals kind of flows into the changes in the grievance policy, changes in the disciplinary policy. Those are fairly simple. Point of, point of clarification. Uh, so we'll have a randomized list that's created. If uh, a, a trustee on the list cannot participate, does not wish to participate or whatever, just go to the next person. Uh, also, all of the trustees are invited to, to the session. So you can come and, and, and uh, you can watch. And, but uh, we will have a panel that will be involved, I guess, in the deliberations and uh, and, uh, and the presentation of evidence. And I want to thank Jay. Uh, you know, we, he's brand new. And he got right in uh, up to his elbows and uh, was uh, really did a nice job clarifying and finding common ground. Uh, it was very impressive. So uh, you have the opportunity to review this. Uh, policy on evidentiary appeals. Does anybody have any questions, any comments? The, the randomization, did that change for each appeal that comes before the board? That once? I, I believe that we had discussed creating a list at the beginning of the uh, year at, at September and then- Oh, it, I, it says the remaining two members of the panel will be selected from the top of a randomized list of board members created at the beginning of July each year. Have the list created and just go through it. And it's This is a very I mean, this does not happen. Uh, and and one of the reasons it doesn't happen is because there's generally very good communication in the branches between the branch, you know, and and there's a there's a there's a well considered and established policy that the rank and file understand coming up through uh, headquarters. And, and that, uh, that and one of the reasons we're responding like this is that the board was terrified. We, did, we, did, uh, we didn't have any experience with this at all. You know how weak the policies were. So that's why we're really digging into this, not because it's going to be uh, often used or even particularly relevant, but because we were frightened. I, I also want to point out before, something ever gets to the appeal stage. I believe in, in according to the policy in the uh, grievance stage, it goes through about five different steps internally 
So there are multiple occasions between the employee and going up through the administration to find common ground and, and try to work out things. Uh, on discipline, there are a number of steps too. It, this, this isn't the first round when it gets to the, the an appeal stage. It's basically burned its way through uh, multiple steps in, in the administration and it's gotten to the final. And what is the, uh, I know you said you, you spoke to some folks from the staff association, what's the response then? So um, I sent, um, sent the same documents that I sent out to the board so go to the staff association to each individual representative. We have one person from each branch library and two people from the headquarters who are on the staff association. So I sent it out to them. Um, they had a meeting, I believe, a week ago. From what I understand, they, they are fine with this. There was one comment saying, why didn't we know about the laws of Maryland before? But it was apparently nobody else responded to that. And um, so I think that they have been made aware of it. They don't seem to have questions. They, they would have brought them back. Um, no, nothing has come back. So I think they're, they're on board with it. They, they also are in the process of revising their bylaws because in their bylaws, they used to have a grievance committee and a grievance process. And I've encouraged them to eliminate that because it was redundant. It was not, it was really counterproductive and they have, um, they are in the process of, of finalizing that and get, taking a vote of their members. And I'm pretty sure that that's gonna pass. And, that, and so those bylaws get adopted by this year. They will come to you most likely in December. I think. The committee in November. And I would like to thank Lonnie for rewriting it so that it's understandable for normal people. <laughs> I told him I'm coming for his Roman numerals now. <laughs> Does the agreement uh, has the right to appeal to the state board? Um, that is only uh, pursuant to law if they are uh, they are discharged. That is that is the only case when they can. And, uh, and it has to be when it's a, when it is not a unanimous vote. When it is not a unanimous vote. In other words, Kristen Baronis, who was with us, she is on the state library board. And um, so it would go to the state library board if the vote on a dismissal is not unanimous. And I cannot dismiss. I can suspend up to 10 days. I can suspend. And that can be appealed to this board. But I cannot dismiss. If I'm ready, if we are ready to dismiss an employee to the board, I bring it to the board, the, the, um, and then you make the decision. And if your decision is unanimous, that's the end of it. Yeah. Any other questions? Is there a vote on the? Uh... Well, it, it, it is it is it stuff. is reviewed by the it is being sent by the executive committee and recommended so that it would have to be adopted by the whole. So, so I don't think you need a motion because it's coming from committee, and therefore, um, if you want to call the question, you can. Are there any further comments or discussion? Moving to the next, we have, um, and both for the disciplinary and for the grievance appeals, it's, it is substantially form only. Um, most of it is to conform it to the, to, to show that you appeal uh, pursuant to the evidentiary appeals policy that you just adopted. However, uh, for discipline, we had to go back into the policy and change it because the 
bases for discipline, both as to the suspension and the uh, dismissal is outlined under the education article. And we had to conform it to what was the educational article. The education article. Additionally, um, I, I think there was a, uh, another portion that we had to, to change to be in conformance with the disciplinary article. Um, I'm sorry, in conformance to the education article. So that's the two changes that we made. This um, policy, in my view, uh, is, is long and maybe redundant. We'll probably want to come back in and, and, and make this policy a little bit better later on. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, I think I, my purpose was just getting it in conformance with the law and in conformance with the new uh, evidentiary appeal panel. So does anybody have any questions on the policy that the, or the changes that we created? Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Ayes. As the record shows, unanimous. Moving right on to the next motion. Okay, moving on to the grievance policy. The same statement goes as uh, changing it to uh, conform. The only substantive uh, change that was made was defining what a grievance was. Since a grievance wasn't defined, basically an employee could uh, uh, grieve virtually anything, uh, not wanting peanut butter sandwiches in the lunchroom because they were allergic or something like that. Uh, this would, we changed it, the substance of the grievance to anything, meaning that you could grieve anything that was against the Anne Arundel County Public Library's policies, law, et cetera. Uh, this would mean that uh, if somebody thinks that the policies say this and uh, the law is, I'm sorry, that the library is interpreting it in a manner that they disagree with, then they can bring a grievance for that purpose. Um, for any other reasons in those, the policies, county ordinances, and federal and state law. Um, so that is a substantive change that we made to that policy. But in addition to that, we just tinkered with it to address the uh, evidentiary panel uh, that we've already uh, addressed here. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I know that was a little bit uh, convoluted, but uh, I basically saw this as an opportunity to square the, what was defined as a grievance with what they did in Anne Arundel County which was the same thing. So I, I just tried to make it easier in that regard. Any questions? Madam Chair? All right. All in favor? Aye. Again, are there any names? Pause and introduce a couple of guests that did not uh, send it to the system. Uh, two regional managers are uh, Wanda Wagner, <laughs> and she's from North County. I've known her for years. <laughs> <laughs> and again, Carol Payson from West County. Very much. Now we will have the pleasure of joining. To go to our committee meeting. Yeah. Could I get a moment to talk about the GMA? Oh, yes, yeah, please do. Yes, please. And, and Chris Warren, yes, please do. Okay. Uh, so, um, as you've heard, uh, uh, Assistance for Maryland Libraries, uh, we have our, um, our yearly conference coming up, and it's going to be right here at Bush. We're very excited about that. Uh, it's an opportunity to see. Uh, uh, the, the CML annual meeting and hear two outstanding speakers. Uh, and uh, Irene Padilla, uh, who is the um, uh, Maryland State Library 
will be giving a, a short address to the state of Maryland libraries. You know, it's not hyperbole when we talk about how strong our system is. And I think we know that from our experience within the system, our time in the branch, our interactions, our services, the reports that we hear. But when you contextualize that against some of the difficulties that other counties are struggling with, um, we really are, uh, as, as citizens of this county, we're very fortunate. So I think if, if for no other reason, it makes sense to come in and starts at, uh, at 10, it makes sense to come in and hear what's going on statewide if you're so able. This is October 15th, Saturday. And then there are two speakers, Martin Garner, is gonna talk about intellectual freedom. And he's edited the 10th edition of the Intellectual Freedom Manual. Uh, and I have seen some of his presentations on YouTube. Uh, it's very strong. And then um, yeah, uh, um, the uh, uh, director of how do you say this? Skip Khalifa is that how you say? It? Yeah, Khalifa, which is a consortium of California law, large consortium several hundred California libraries uh, is, is going to talk about um, techniques and trends for library board effectiveness. Again, pretty salient for us. Uh, there's a lunch that will happen. It's gonna be a great day. And the more I hear about it, the uh, program team put together a really outstanding program. So hopefully uh, it'll be Okay, so I just have a couple of announcements. We're going to adjourn into committees in just a moment. This is the list of committees. Um, sorry, there was a little confusion last week, but we got that straightened out. That was on my part. There was some confusion. Um, would each of the trustees just take one of these for your trustee manuals? Um, Jim, there's one coming around to you. Um, welcome. I know you've been sick. Uh, here today, so um, the other thing is, and my screen went blank, so let me see if I can remember this. The Governance uh, Strategy and Organization Committee will be meeting behind us and moving up here. With our university, we will be meeting in conjunction with the conference room, and finance and audit will be in this room. Um, is there anything else? Um, we'll go to the order today. Yes. It, should, it, it, it has. Well, I can't really say in finance. Hmm. I, um, we we thought we had corrected it, so we'll um, we'll go back and take another look. Yeah. At, at any rate, we we did. You you have the paper version now, and um, it should, you know we did we did make an attempt on Monday to change it, so it should be right. But if it's not, we'll we'll get it. Um, I'm glad to see. To have seen so many of you at the party on on Sunday, that was great fun, and, and uh, we'll, we'll try to do it again one of these days. Anybody else have any anything for uh, before we go to committees? Want to go to the order? Slam it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs>